The Return of Dr. X from 1939 was a fun, medical, mystery, mad scientist film themed around blood transfusions. I have to admit, this was one of the most interesting roles I have ever seen Humphrey Bogart in. I mean, I'll get to that in a little bit, but wow, he is crazy in this film. Anyhow, here's a summary of what goes on in this film. We open up with reporter Walter Garrett, he's played by Wayne Morris, who goes to meet with the famous Angela Morova, played by Laia Liss, and you know, she's just in her apartment chilling out with her pet monkey. You, you know, Michael Jackson style, I guess. Well, after he talks with her, this mysterious hand grabs her from behind and kills her. Walter arrives just in time to find her dead, and he calls to the editor to tell him there's a big scoop going on here. Detectives show up, but when they do, the body is now missing. What happened? Hmm. Back at the office, Walter is told he's being fired because, well, lo and behold, Morova is actually alive and she's suing the paper, and so is the hotel. So Walter gets the boot here, but he meets up with his doctor friend, tells him the story about how this woman was found on the ground, wants to know if it's possible that someone can be stabbed and lose blood and somehow survive. Well, his doctor friend, Mike Rhodes, is played here by Dennis Morgan, who I recently watched in Christmas in Connecticut with Barbara Stanwyck. It was a great movie, by the way. Well, when Walt explains the situation about finding Morova and so on with, you know, the wound near the heart, you know, he agrees that she should be dead from blood loss. And, you know, the body was all white, so where was the blood? Hmm. So Mike says he'll speak with Dr. Flegg, who's played by John Little. He's sort of this suspicious doctor, you know, he's got the goatee and the monocle, so, you know, something's sketchy about this guy. But he's an expert on blood, so he's going to talk to him about it. But meanwhile, Mike has another issue that there's supposed to be a blood transplant surgery that morning, but the donor has not shown up. Hmm. So nurse Joan Vance, played here by Rosemary Lane, turns out she's the right type for this transfer, so she steps in to replace him instead. The blood transfusion is a success, and after this, Mark talks to Dr. Flegg about, you know, his question from earlier, is it possible to survive a puncture wound near the heart? And of course, this Dr. Flegg just scoffs at him. Such foolishness! Tell him to change his brand of liquor. Ha ha ha. But when Mark walks out, Dr. Flegg gives him a suspicious look. Mmm. Well, Joan comes through the transfusion just fine. Mark has gone to visit her, and after confirming she's recovered okay, he invites her out for a date. Well, wait a minute, are you supposed to do that kind of thing? Well, anyhow, he leaves and he talks to his friend, this Walter guy, and they soon find out that the police want to see this doctor. So, Mark and Walter travel together to a crime scene, and the police show him the body of Stanley Rogers. He's on the ground dead and drained of blood. Now, he was the one that was supposed to be the blood transfusion that morning. So, we get into a lecture about different types of blood groups, how there's category one through category four. I guess this was before the time of A, B, and O, and so on, 1930s, I guess. Anyhow, the blood on the floor was this mysterious group four. So Mark takes a sample of it and they depart. He heads back to his lab to study it. And what he finds out is that this blood sample is some mysterious quality. It's not from Rogers or anything human. Hmm. But he's tired and tells Walter goodnight, heads home. But first, he heads over to see this Dr. Flegg again about the sample. Remember, he's like the blood expert guy. Walter, meanwhile, kind of tails secretly to see what's going on. While Mark arrives, he waits at the lab. He's told that Dr. Flegg will arrive soon. And it is here that Humphrey Bogart makes his entrance as this Kane character, and oh my goodness, he is completely over the top. He's got pasty white skin, makeup on his face, thick glasses, a black flat top with a skunk stripe, and he's holding a rabbit like Dr. Evil. <laughs> I love it. They shake hands, and watch how Mark reacts after the handshake, like <laughs> it was cold and oily or something. This is great. Anyhow, after he briefly talks to Mark, all quiet and creepy and, you know, completely non-Humphrey Bogart. Uh, Dr. Flegg arrives and tells him to go back to his work. 
And then Dr. Flegg and Mark talk about this weird blood that was discovered, and you know he's going to take a look at it. So they get it set up on you know the, the the microscope to take a look, and while watching it, Kane is in the background holding this beaker in his hand, and he's got a crazy look on his face, and he just cracks the beaker, and just kind of looks all bland about it. You know this is so weird. Well, Walter the reporter has been snooping around to see what's going on. Mark leaves and. Morova suddenly shows up. Remember, she was a lady at the beginning who had died. Man, what is going on here? She sees Dr. Flegg, you know, I had to see you, and then she collapses, and then she's carried into the lab because she feels cold and weak. Kane calls Dr. Flegg a failure, and then Dr. Flegg tells him to get out, and then he starts another transfer on this Morova. So there's some weird stuff going on here with blood transfusions. Well, the next day, Dr. Flegg visits with Mark, tells him to forget about everything that he saw previously. He also wants information about Joan, the nurse who had done the blood transfusion earlier, as he likes to keep track of blood donors. Hmm. Well, Walter shows up again and talks with Mark, and they agree that something fishy's going on. Walter wants to meet with Morova again, but Mark can't, because he's got a date. But they figure out a way to go do the date and also visit with Morova on the way. They stop at her place and they find her all weak and pale and she's just demanding to know why they are there. And they give her some whiskey to revive her and she answers some of their questions about how she is a type of one blood. And she also describes the previous events of having been stabbed and losing consciousness with no memory of what followed. But just then, that mysterious Dr. Kane shows up. He says he's acting in Dr. Flegg's place, and he's there to help take care of her. Well, after a few words with Mark and Walter, they leave, and Kane is left behind, looking creepy, heading for Morova. So Walter and Mark, they head to his boss's house, the editor of the paper, to give him an update. And the boss seems ready to change the story, but he calls the newspaper, they find out that Morova has just been pronounced dead. The boss yells at Walter to get out, and, well, the two of them don't believe it, so they head to the see the Undertaker to find out, you know, what happened to Morova. They want to check things out. And the Undertaker was played by Olin Howland. He was the old guy from the Blob movie with Steve McQueen. Now, it was kind of cool to see him here. Well, Mark examines the body while Walter is asking questions, and it turns out that Dr. Flegg had summoned them to get the body. Hmm, something weird is going on here. And I love the brief exchange. As they leave, Walter says to the Undertaker, hope to see you again sometime. And he says, I'm sure you will. <laughs> great, great stuff. Walter goes to the newspaper records and he's searching for stories about this Kane guy. And he finds some headlines about a Dr. Xavier, who is definitely Kane. You know, it looks just like a younger, healthier Humphrey Bogart. But he finds out that this Dr. Xavier was put to death in the electric chair. And he and Mark head to the graveyard, find his grave, and they start digging it up and find an empty coffin. Hmm. Puzzled, they confront Dr. Flegg, who finally admits that Kane and Dr. Xavier are the same and that, yes, he, Dr. Flegg, had found a way to bring a man back to life. And he does this demonstration of bringing a dead bunny back to life with electricity and a special blend of chemicals. He confesses to bringing back Morova with artificial blood. Cain, meanwhile, watches and listens from the shadows. So Walter and Mark leave, only to encounter the police who are ready to arrest them for grave robbing. Cain, meanwhile, moves in on Dr. Flegg, realizing he's been discovered and demands the list of blood donors, then heads after Joan. What's going to happen next? Will this mean Dr. Kane be caught? Will Walter get his job back? Well, you need to watch this one for yourself to see. Now, some closing thoughts. This was both silly and entertaining, and I have to say, the Kane character is so not what I expect of Bogart. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing Humphrey Bogart play like the world-weary Rick of Casablanca or the cynical detective of The Big Sleep, not a pasty laboratory guy with a stripe in his hair. You know, it looks like he's doing some sort of Johnny Depp, Sweeney Todd cosplay here. <laughs> TCM had a quote from Bogart. This is one of the pictures that made me march into Jack Warner and ask for more money. 
You can't believe what this one was like. I had a part that somebody like Bela Lugosi or Boris Karloff should have played. <laughs> I totally agree. And you know, they would have been awesome in this role. But still, it was trippy to see Bogart take on this role. It's totally different and I loved it. Now, supposedly this movie loosely follows a 1932 film called Dr. X, hence why it's called The Return of Dr. X. So I'll add that to my list. Hopefully I can get to it one day. But you know, for all the silliness, the production was good. I like the direction of Vincent Sherman, and it really did a great job with the mysterious lighting in the laboratory and so on. Black and white looks great, but you know, as my few fans know, I'm generally just a big fan of black and white cinema to begin with, so I really enjoyed this one. It's goofy, it's a medical mystery themed around blood transfusions, and it's got an unexpected role by Humphrey Bogart. It's definitely one you should check out. One more observation, anything having to do with blood being transferred or replaced with artificial blood, I know this is an obscure reference, but it reminds me of the mad scientists from Mystery Science Theater from the episode Ega, where Dr. Forrester replaced Frank's blood with radiator fluid. <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind, but you know, the theme isn't that far off. So if you get a chance, the episode's on YouTube. I'll link it in the comments. It's one of my favorites. I. In addition to watching old movies, love Mystery Science Theater. The days with Joel and Mike are just my favorite. So I just had to make that mention. I know it's obscure, but <laughs> just go check it out. See what I mean.